Bank Field here in Jacksonville. Today we've got an interesting Week 11 matchup on tap as it'll be the Tennessee Titans taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars. season has hit high gear and off we go in week 11 on EA Sports. Now Jamal Agnew from his end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25 yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Coming out with a jumbo package to start the drive. Check 26, check 26. Off twist, off twist, off twist. Off twist, off twist. Let's go, Fish. Here we go. Here's A Chan to start the drive. And not terrific a week ago in that victory over Tampa Bay, Charles. And it was the pass rush that really keyed their victory. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. He completes it to Ridley. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. When they needed a play this year, he's certainly been the guy to deliver it. As this season has gone on, he's been awfully consistent and sometimes spectacular. So the big play gets him across midfield now for first and 10. ETN up the middle. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. The Jaguars at 8-1 and one on the year. They come in here hot. I mean, over the last nine, Charles, they are 8-1. and one. And that record, the way that they're playing, they've proven to me and I think anyone else in the league that they're able to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with anyone, and they look forward to the challenge. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. That early game script that they drew up is working pretty well here on this first drive. Already in field goal range, Charles knocking on the door of the red zone. You know, Brandon, when we met with the coaching staff, they kind of predicted that they would come out firing like this. I think you and I were a little skeptical that it'd be this easy, but they certainly knew what they were doing in scouting, in preparation, and understanding what their team was capable of. Well, this defense for the Titans, they were terrific a week ago in that victory over Tampa Bay, Charles. And what keyed their victory? The pass rush. Got to the quarterback six times for sacks and plenty of other turbulence in the pocket for him as well. Hard to throw the ball downfield when all you're seeing is opposing jerseys come at you. Now what a first down pickup of eight. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. Now Lawrence. They'll get this out to the flat for ETN. And they'll bring him down at the 13-yard line. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch. And that'll bring up a third down. It's safe to say the passing game has found a rhythm. He's now 4-4, four four, but might need to be 5-5 five five to throw the ball downfield. I wouldn't get away from him flinging it because 4-4 four for four already? I think he's got a good chance of picking this one up here on third down. The kick by McManus is good. So he's been automatic to this point of the season, and he connects on the field goal there. And what a luxury it is to have a kicker you can depend upon, partner, because he hasn't missed all year long. Converts on that one as well. And kudos to you. You didn't jinx him. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line.
First and ten. Here's Levis. And that is incomplete. He couldn't hold on through the contact. Brings up second down. You look at this Jaguar defense. They were excellent in that win over the 49ers last week. And what I saw on film was nearly an unstoppable pass rush. They had five sacks last week, plenty of hurries. So now do you just max protect on offense, keep everyone in and run, you know, one or two receiver routes to make sure your quarterback stays up? We'll soon find out. Second and ten. Levis. A short throw taken in by a Conquo. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. The Titans get 14 yards there and move the chains as well. For many teams, the evaluation of tight ends has really changed. We used to wonder about how they would block first and foremost. Now we want to know how these guys can run because we envision them in offenses, catch the ball. How much yardage can they gain after that? And that on display there for a good pickup. First and ten, it's Levis. Flush to his right. And it's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. They decided the opportunity was there and launched a deep ball, but he was unable to get away from the defender, couldn't create space, couldn't uncover at the end of the route, and that one winds up incomplete. Here's second and ten. Levis looking to throw. That's to the sideline and incomplete. Not the warmest start to throw in the football. He was one for three, now one for four on the opening drive. So getting him comfortable is the key. And for him, it might be different than what we think is comfortable. We're probably thinking swing passes, easy check downs. Some guys, they're better off throwing it downfield. That's what really loosens them up. And Levis going back to the air. Flushed out right. He's got his running back out of the backfield. It's a big play there for Tennessee. 44 yards. One of the things that led this organization to commit to him as a starting quarterback as a rookie, his ability to keep his eyes downfield and make plays out of the pocket. Able to see the receiver while on the move and complete a really accurate throw. Eluding the pressure right. And it's caught in the end zone. Touchdown, Tennessee. Chigakonkwo, his sixth touchdown of the season. And the Titans are able to answer the early three points and take a first quarter lead. Extra point up and good by Folk. And that makes it a 7-3 lead. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he had no room to run as he's tackled down inside the 20. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And you know, it's certainly a lot of football left to play. We're not into December yet, but right now where we stand, they're in first place. And now off to the races, down the right side. Touchdown, Jaguar. And it's through, and that makes the lead 10-7. 10-7, our score after one, right here on EA Sports. Second quarter now from Jacksonville, and it's the Jags with the football. As they've got it as we resume action. Titans offense set to begin the drive. They currently sit one game over 500 thanks to their victory a week ago. Now, Charles, they've been really an up and down team all year. Do you think that they have enough to get into the playoffs? Well, you did mention that they've been up and down all year. So to me, it depends on what week you catch them. When they're at their best, I think they're definitely playoff worthy. But to me, they haven't been able to bring the intensity week in and week out. And that could be their Achilles heel. 
A first down carry for Henry. This will be stopped about two yards shy of the marker. Eight yard gain, second and two. Good yardage there on first down, exactly what you want. Get yourself set up to keep making first downs, keep the clock running. And if they're smart, you're starting to milk the clock. No hurry before you run your second down play. From the 44-yard line, here's second and a couple. Now Levis. A short throw taken in by Conquo. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. On first down, Levis escaping the pressure right, and he'll just get rid of it. Nice progress down the field was halted by that incompletion. They could try for some safe yards here to get things moving again, or keep throwing it and pushing it downfield to try and pick up bigger yardage. Now a second and 10. Levis back to throw. Ball game. Get a hand on every throw in coverage. They want the deflections. They want the knockaways. Pick it yourself if you can, but at least knock it down and guarantee it's incomplete. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. Now again, it's Levis looking to throw it. Flush to his right. Throw right side going to be taken in by Henry. And he's going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Jaguars' 22-yard line. That good for 19 yards as they pick up the conversion on third. Levis to throw on first and 10 here. Flushed out right. And he wisely will throw that one away. So it looks like they still have some fight in them on this series because it seemed like things were headed for the red zone. But this defense gets two more stops. They can keep them out of that area. So after the incompletion, second and 10 from the 22. Levis to throw it. This is caught. Second catch for him today, and it'll wind up a first down. I'll give them credit for a good read right there because they read the man coverage on the right side and sent the tight end a few steps down the field and then angled him to the left on a crossing route. And he was able to get enough separation on this play to turn it into a nice game. Henry trying to get to the goal line, but he's going to be stopped just short at the one. Second and goal from the one. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. Denzel Mims, a one-yard touchdown reception. And the Titans have taken the lead. Full connects on the extra point, and the lead is now 14 to 10. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And he's going to be out of bounds here right at the 20-yard line. Let's go. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. Well, partner, you know, coaches always say that every play is designed to score a touchdown. Sometimes that's not really true, but last drive, that was the case. One play to get into the end zone, and now they'll try to duplicate that success here. And it's rare for those moments to happen. Incredible when they do. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. The Lawrence will throw. He'll get this off to ETN. And a great move on the play as he takes this one past the 25. So eight yards on the completion there, and it's third and four now. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for offense. 
It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Achan on the counter. And he will lose yardage back to the 34-yard line. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on their early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. They go play action now. Lawrence on the move to his left. He'll go up top here for Hamler. It's caught inside the 25. Top the lead. Extra point from McManus is good. And it's now 17-14. To the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And able to take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. And now with still more than a minute to go in what's been a tight game, you figure we'll try to see them move the ball downfield. And remember, they get the kickoff to start the second half, so this is a golden opportunity for them to go down there and put up a couple of sixes back-to-back. -back. What a momentum swing that would be. Yeah, you might be able to get a two-for-one without ever even giving up the football. So now they'll come up on second and ten, once again from the 28. They'll try the right side with Henry. And to the 36-yard line, taken down there after getting eight yards. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Now they need two. Here's third down. Levis sets up to throw here. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. And this is away. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. On the return, here's Agnew. A nice return there of 11 to help mitigate a good punt. And it'll be Jaguar football as they take over deep in their own territory. The Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. And they may just be content to take this three-point lead and head into the locker room. Tackle that time by Jarquiski Tart. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out. And they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Play action. It's Lawrence. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. Down to the 10. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. Maybe time for one play on offense. And seven seconds to go in the half as the kick is away. And somewhat surprisingly, a fair catch called for on the short kick, so no return. And they'll begin at the 25-yard line. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. And with seven seconds remaining, not much time to really do anything. Levis in trouble, down he goes. And that'll do it for the end of the second quarter. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we welcome you back now alongside Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon getting set for quarter number three here. The Titans going to get the ball to start the second half, and they trail here as we get back to it on EA Sports. And the fair catch signaled for and taken, so they'll begin this third quarter from their 25-yard line. Go, go. 
Mims in motion right. Now he's going to get it on the jet sweep. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him, so when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, it makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. Well, defensively, they haven't let him just sit in the pocket and get comfortable, and that's opposite a lot of game plans in today's NFL. Ordinarily, you're trying to keep the quarterback hemmed in. In this case, they brought the heat, and if he flushes out, they're fine with that, and they force another incompletion. And a big loss here as he's taken down. The defense rising to the challenge and setting him back on the sack. Here's Ryan Stonehouse now as the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Agnew now to return. Good blocking there, nearly sprung him. As it is, it'll go as a 19-yard return. And the Jaguars go on offense, first down and 10. And these last few drives offensively, just not able to get anything going, so what needs to change? I think a lot of the guys will go back and review, so to speak, because everyone has someone assigned to, how did each play work? Okay, what did, what did we use that kind of worked for us during this game? Try and get back to some of those plays, as well as the possibility of showing something you haven't shown already in this game and trying to change things up. We'll see if they take the advice of Mr. Davis. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to it? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. Aaron it out, looking for Ridley. And that is going to be pulled in one-handed. Wow. The chain gang hustling to catch up. Here's first and goal from just inside the 10. And they'll run with ETN. And he will fight his way into the end zone from taking a three-score lead. McManus's point after is good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. To the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Tennessee offense about set and ready to go. I kind of feel like they've reached a do-or-die point in this game, Charles. If they're going to try to pull off an impressive comeback, it has to start right here, right now. Yeah, now they've got a final chance to get out of this situation, but they also understand they've got to move the ball and move it fast. In addition, they need to save as much time so they can get two more possessions. And the hole closes quickly there. He gets maybe a couple up to the 38. That ground game contained again there, Charles, and that's really a big reason that they're trailing right now. And give a lot of credit to that defensive front. That's exactly what they worked for all week to try and take away the run game, make them one-dimensional in the battle of game plans. Theirs has been superior. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. Here's Levis. Short throw taken in by a Conklo. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Levis now off of play action. That is caught by Mims. And they're able to work this to the 25 before it's all said and done. Levis now on first and 10. Eluding the pressure right. And this one is going to be off the mark, too far out in front. And their back's up against the wall a little bit, and they come through by forcing an incompletion. Now they've got to continue to ratchet up the intensity a couple more times and get off the field before giving up any more yardage. 
Uh, second and ten, fourth coming here. Third quarter action from Jacksonville. Back to throw, it's Levis. Toward the back corner of the end zone, but he could not get the feet down. This will wind up incomplete. But it winds up incomplete. This offense was on the move. Now two straight incompletions have them looking at third and ten. They'll throw it again with Levis. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. Well, how about the coverage we just saw him break out on third down? Dime defense, blanketed the field with extra defensive backs and speed unable to find an open hole to complete that pass. So the response to that touchdown on the other side to begin the third quarter look just three points but still a response nonetheless. You're exactly right about that because I think you needed to answer back with something even though it's not six. Just enough to send the message that says hey we're not going away. From his end zone here comes Agnew. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. Jacksonville offense set to begin their next drive. This is sort of what you would call a put-away drive, isn't it? They score here, especially a touchdown. It's almost out of reach. It certainly feels that way, and I think that they're going to call their plays accordingly because what you really want to do, even though you know the scoreboard is still up there and the game's going to go on, in fact, you can take the spirit away from another team, that their drive and will to come back and win can be taken with another score right here. It's still third quarter, but you just get that feel. Yeah, they're teetering right there on the brink, aren't they? And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. That one good for a gain of 13 for Jacksonville and a first down. How about that run? Picks up a first down. Note the enthusiasm in my voice. Remember, last week, AFC Offensive Player of the Week. I think he's trying to get another one in the fold. And you talked watching film a lot about his form and just hitting the hole, running north and south, as we like to say. And, I, I, and now the rookie's free. And he's been a busy man. Five for five now as he knocks another one through to extend the lead. After the touchdown, Cook now to kick this one away. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. The Titans offense set to begin the drive. They're down three touchdowns to this point, needing to put something together as they have it first and ten. A good start to the drive here as that's caught out on the left side. And he gets this to the other side of midfield across the 45 before going out. A really good pickup of 28 yards. So in Jacksonville territory now, here's a first and 10 at the 43. Working from the gun, here's Levis escaping the pressure right. And that one not to be, it's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Back now in Jacksonville. 
A lot of happy faces in the crowd at this point as their guys have a big lead here to start quarter number four. So second down, still 10 yards to go. Ball on the 43. Meanwhile, Levis's throw here caught by Mims. And they'll be inside the 35 now at the 34-yard line. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. So they just need one yard here to pick up the first down. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. Off the play fake, Levis being chased out left. And he's left with no option here but to throw it away. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The deep. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now they'll throw here out of the gun. He'll get that one to Carter complete. Nine yards, not quite enough, and they'll be left now with third and one. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes it really difficult. And he will have a Titans first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Levis looking to move him around a bit. They'll look to throw here on first down. Flush to his right. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I did like his decision making there to make sure they picked up something instead of forcing a throw. Now they've got more manageable play coming up to try and pick up the first down. And don't rule out the possibility that he just keeps it and runs again. Oh, and this one it may need to go back to the drawing board. He's going to be swallowed up right away. It's a six-yard run. Leaves him with about a foot or so here still to go to hit the marker with third down coming up. On third down, Henry. They'll be marked inches short. No gain on the play. And that's going to lead them to fourth down. They'll run. It's Henry. But no reason not to try it there. And they do indeed convert on fourth. There wasn't even thought of a short field goal. There was no hesitation. They were going for it. I think he was thinking ahead a couple plays ago. That if he got in this situation, they were definitely going for it. And you're right. It was a confident call and a decisive run to pick it up. And he'll keep working toward that end zone as he's down to about the two-yard line. From the two now, second and goal. And they'll turn to the power game to try to get in. And he gets in. Touchdown, Tennessee. Seathan Carter, his first touchdown on the year. And the Titans have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. On for the end, the lead will be cut down to 14. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. The Jaguars going to go ahead and use their first timeout. That'll leave them with two remaining. We'll be back after this. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. From his end zone, here comes Agnew. And this return will net positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Jaguars come to the line to start their next drive. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after him right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. I say, <laughs> run the football. You've got the lead. But let's watch it and find out who's right. 
This, in all probability, another run here on second and eight. On play action, Lawrence steps away. Now he'll let it go on the run, deep left side. Touchdown, K.J. Hamler with his second touchdown of the game, fourth of the year. And the Jaguars are closing in on a ninth victory on the year as they extend their lead. Boy, he has been fun to watch throwing the football in this one. It's certainly not fun for that defense, though, Charles. Now up to four touchdown passes in this ball game. Yeah, we're supposed to be neutral, but I'm feeling their pain right now because he has absolutely carved up the secondary. A clinic on how to attack a defense and take them out of the game. Well, things obviously not going their way. Trailing here in the fourth quarter, and that penalty going to go ahead and give the other side some extra yardage. We all know it's an intense game and things can get heated out there. That's part of the battle. But bottom line, you got to keep your cool. That was not an example of doing that. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to let it fly. And that's caught inside the 35. So now then, the big play. Set up a throw. Throw left side, taken in by Mims. And it's a Titans touchdown. Denzel Mims, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Titans get a bit closer. Extra point up and good by Folk. And the lead will be cut down to 14. So two scores down. Time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. Now the Jags will use the second of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And the Jaguars are going to cover this one up. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Meanwhile, Lawrence's throw taken in by Ridley here. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that'll bring up second down. like he'll throw here and this is taken in at the five and he will get this into the end zone for a Jaguar touchdown Calvin Ridley 36 yards and the Jaguars have pretty well put it away here in the fourth quarter Lawrence going to look to throw for it. And this is going to be caught. So add two more to the lead as they continue to pour it on here in the fourth. And I guess the touchdown wasn't enough. They want the onside kick as well. And the Titans are going to recover the football. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we've brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. And a big loss here as he's three seconds to go in the game. Well, this certainly feels like complimentary football to me, partner, because the momentum from the team's touchdown drive Looks like it's made its way over to the defense. They're working together in tandem now. Offense gets in the end zone. Defense with a big sack on the first play of the following drive. Now Tennessee going to use the second of their timeouts. That'll leave them with just one remaining in this fourth quarter of play. That's a good bounce back play right there after taking a sack on first down. Didn't quite get it to the marker, 
but now they're in a much better spot for a third and short yardage call. If you're the offensive coordinator, you like looking at that section a heck of a lot better than trying to figure out third and long. He had him. He was open, but he couldn't get it to him. It's incomplete. I think this is what this game's become now. You just go deep, see if we can get something to go our way. Yeah, not the most creative or most inventive play call there, but not much has worked for them throughout this game. They're almost at a loss about what to dial up. Desperation time now. Here's Levis. Pass taken in by his big tight end. And whistles, and they take their final timeout with seven seconds left. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. One last shot at the end zone. And that is going to officially draw the curtain on this one as the last one.